Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Thank you for joining me again. I'm so excited to sit with you and really go through this book with you, with you. Um, so the book I decided to read next was The Bluest Eyes by Toni Morrison. And um, first thing I would like to say is this book was better than what I expected, and I highly recommend this book to anybody, in particular, personally, for Black women. Um, and I say that because, for me, the point, the point to this book was personally finding your placement in a society where beauty is very much one-sided and we have standards that don't meet everybody's uniqueness within this world, especially towards a black culture where our beauty is diminished or our beauty is ignored. And so I, in my opinion, I would definitely write, recommend this to any black woman or any black person, whatever you identify as gender-wise, um, I do think it's important for our culture and our people to really understand that we are beautiful no matter what, and that our history and our uniqueness should be intensified and not ignored. So, I do have some more, but anyways, so I was reading a book, and I was going to do just a regular book review where, you know, I rated I rated the book in general and then I went through the structure of it and then I, you know, restated some quotes and called it a day. But with this one, since she is so poetic and she very much is an artist, I wanted to kind of mix it up where um, the quotes or the paragraphs that I did highlight, I connected them with uh, artwork that I really like and I feel like had a connection with what was being said. So within this video, while I'm talking and just restating my highlights throughout the book, I want to have a visual. So I hope you enjoy it. But just to rate the book itself, I would definitely give it a 10 out of 10. It is truly a really good book. I really love her expression to events and experiences that she may have in her life, or just even if it's fiction based, you know, having that part of her expressed through words is very, like I said before, poetic, but also the way she describes it is not just through our five senses but she emphasizes a lot on emotions and the impact that our emotions have to our senses and how we interpret the experiences that we have in our lives so i really like the route that she went in expressing her words um so yeah 10 out of 10 also the structure of the book you know as you can tell it's a really short book it's nothing too thick or too much but um she does it by seasons so you know she goes in order like that and then within the seasons there's like smaller chapters so but the chapters are not numbered um a lot of the chapters are which i don't really not express but the title are little paragraphs of a i'm assuming of a poem that she expresses in the beginning of the book and it's just re repeated throughout the chapters but um yeah so since the book was so small and the structure of it really helped i was able to read the book pretty fast so if you're looking for a book to like you know bring for vacation or bring when you're at work and you're on break you know i really recommend it for that purpose because it's, you're not being overwhelmed by information and truthfully i think the story within itself was very intriguing and interesting so I was reading it more and more but um 
you know, I don't want to give too much because I obviously want you guys to be able to read it and still have some excitement in the unknown of it. But from what I got from it, my perspective, the plot was based on a black girl wanting blue eyes. And it's not the typical of like, it's not going to be an adventure. It's more of within that plot, she explains why she wanted that. She explains black beauty within itself and also she explains the girl's history in a sense of she explains her childhood she emphasizes characters in her life that has brought awareness to what her wish is based on and also just bringing awareness in truthfully what i feel like what every black girl childhood goes through where you are trying to find yourself within a world that doesn't fully accept you. So I um, I was definitely surprised. Like I really, the parts that she highlighted, like for example, she brought up stories about her dad and their relationship and she highlighted before she was even born, the parents' relationship and how I even became a thing or how I even became a marriage or a love and those stories were more necessary than I realized because you get to know the child before the child is even created you get to know the mother before she's even a mother and you understand the patterns before they even created so I just really thought that was beautiful and I didn't highlight as much because I was really into the story and for me it wasn't much to highlight but to really take a minute to sip with, with what was being said but like I said I do want to go through the ones that I did highlight and explain the pictures and the stuff that I wanted to pick for it so yeah let's get into it Okay, so um, the first the first one that I highlighted was I don't want to say chapter one, but the first few pages of the book, and it expresses. But there are some who collapse silently, anonymously, with no voice to express or acknowledge it. They are invincible. The death of self esteem can occur quickly, easily in children, before the ego has legs, so to speak. Couple the vulnerability of youth, indifference, parents, dismissive adults in a world which is which in its language, laws, and images reinforces despair, and the journey to destruction is sealed. So within that page, she is expressing um, The realization of that everybody has the experience of being disliked, being rejected, being pretty much bullied for who they are and who they present themselves to be. And I highlighted that paragraph because it's pretty much for me taking away the innocence that children have before they are brought into the world and before the world can consume them. And so I connected this paragraph with this image because obviously this image is beautiful. This is legit the action of birth and the beauty that a child brings to the life of a family. And I sadly don't have the name or the photographer of this photo but I found it on my Pinterest one one day and I truly <laughs> thought it was so beautiful. Like when I saw it, it brought me so much joy and I could relate to why they were smiling so hard in the picture and why there was so much love within this photo. And I feel like this paragraph emphasizes that, you know, this is before it, ego exists. This is before the children or the child has to form itself into the world and become the version that is accepted. 
So I really like this photo and I wanted it to be connected with this paragraph. And then next photo, which is by Alexandra Wilskin, Wilska. Um, and this one is very, <laughs> when I first saw it, I was thrown off. I was like, okay, a little intimidated, but when I picked this photo, it was mainly because I seen this picture as the child and then the ego that is behind this child that the world has created. And, you know, the power it has for children, the power, you know, having traditions and having these forms of society norms and being categorized in certain views of how others see you, you know, the power it really holds in the room and in the space that you call your own. And also just the levels and the layers that ends up evolving within the ego. So I really like this photo and I wanted to connect it with this paragraph. Um, so yeah, to continue, on page 17, I highlighted this quote that says, there is a difference between being put out and being put out outdoors. If you are put out, you go somewhere else. If you are outdoors, there's no place to go. The destruction was subliminal, but final. Outdoors was the end of something. In physical fact, a defining and com complying are metaphysical condition within this page pretty much she's explaining when children are put out for bad behavior or just a behavior that is not welcomed within that family and which i could definitely understand what she meant by you know being put out there is a difference where Like she said, being put out and being put outdoors. If you if you are put out, you go somewhere else. If you are outdoors, then there's no place to go. So when I thought of put out, you know, I thought of when, you know, mom is like annoyed with you or something. She's like, yeah, go outside and play. Like, leave me alone for a bit. Do your own thing. And then, of course, you know, come back when the street lights are on. But being put outdoors is like you're getting kicked out where mom is or whoever is over this phase of you and don't like it where it is to the point they can't physically even be around it no more so i um you know i definitely have those experiences with my childhood where you know i was put out or i see my siblings be put out and in a sense of there were stages where they were put out and then they were put outdoors where a warning was done and then the final decision was made and it's very destructive in the family she goes to continue in the next paragraph where she just emphasizes how you know neighbors and other children who knew that child would just be in distraught and a lot of questions will come up with like you know what happened why did this happen and she expresses the pain that she can see within the child that was put out and the Pretty much the, the generations of now after this is going to be a repetitive pattern where we are not supporting or we are not trying to fix the problem, but rather than put the problem outdoors and disconnect with it, even though it's still part of us in some way. So I connected it with this photo, um, which I don't have the name of, sadly, but it is on my Pinterest. And I picked this photo because it's kind of like a visual of your childhood being ripped from you where you had this idea photo, or you had this idea way of living and now pretty much is cutting a seam with what you know to be safe and what you know to be somewhere you can come home to. And, you know, it just sadly having to be ripped out of the child within you. And then... The next photo is called, um, I think it was, it didn't have a name, but it's by Alexandra, it's called Alexandra's Story, and it's by Liz Pollack, and I picked this photo because it legit is a visual, a visual of, you know, the kid being put out and seeing your life before you, like seeing now yourself outside of that pain and outside of that experience and now you having to 
find your own home and be your own whatever that they didn't have for you at the place. So, you know, this photo within itself, it shows the pain of the child and also it shows the truth of, first of all, not knowing the reason of why this child is looking through the fence or why is there this separation and loneliness within the child. And just seeing the pain that the child has without even knowing the full story and why she's looking through this fence. So I really like the, the painting and I wanted to add it within for this quote. But yeah, to continue, um, the next highlight was I had only one desire to dismiss it, to see of what it was made, to discover the dareness, to find the beauty, the desirability that had escaped me, but apparently only me, adults, older girls, shops, magazines, newspapers, window signs, and all the world had agreed that blue-eyed, yellow hair, pink skin doll was what every girl, every girl child desired. So, she continues to just emphasize the importance that social norms or social norms towards beauty is how destructive it is to children of any color, of any background, is, you know, not meeting the expectation when you have no control of what your genes or what the mixture of your two parents will create. So. So just, you know, feeling like you're holding that responsibility to meet these expectations when you're beautiful no matter what and you don't have to meet the standard of beauty. But sadly, it's easier said than done because, you know, even as a kid, I remember like having the typical doll with blue eyes and yellow toned skin and I remember when I first got my darker complexion, or at least my skin complexion doll, and it was like a life-size doll, and I was so happy. <laughs> and I was also confused because it wasn't like, she was my complexion, but had straight hair, and her eyes were very light, like hazel. So it was like, it wasn't the standard of beauty, but it was still within the lines of it, where it was like, you're still meeting the expectation, but in a different way. Um, but I still love that doll. Like, I really fell in love with it. And I wonder if it was because I could see myself within her. But I wanted to add this painting. Um... And again, sadly, I don't have the name of this. Most of the pictures that I am showing is from my Pinterest. Um, and you know, Pinterest love to not have the name of artists. So of course, you know, I am gonna try my best to look up the names for these and put them in the description of this episode. So if you wanna check them out, you can. Um, but I picked this one because it's like when I saw this photo already, I imagined feeling like I don't have, feeling like I am losing pieces of myself. And when I look in the mirror, I see it for fully what it is. So it's like, also in a sense of like, I can't see what is being shown to me in a mirror. I can only see what people have told me that they see of me. And kind of like, if I do look in a mirror, I can only see what they see and I can't actually see the beauty that I already hold within myself with no standards. So, yeah, and then this next photo, which is by Sasha Gordon, and I love her work so much. I highly, highly would recommend to look at her work because it truly is beautiful. But I picked this one is in you know, glorification of you get to identify your own beauty and you get to become what you identify what beauty is. And I just love how, well, even with her face and while she's painting, there is love being created with every stroke. 
and there is you know expression of self-love where she is vulnerable and she's showing her body and she's accepting all the features that has come from her generations and yeah just embracing all of you and willing to create and show the versions of you that you don't know yet so yeah um and then on page 45 she states try as she might she could never get her eyes to disappear so what was the point they were everything everything was there in them all those pictures all those faces she had long ago given up the idea of running away to see these new pictures and these new faces so in this page she this child goes through a traumatic or she's going through a traumatic part of her childhood and she is kind of going or trying to figure out ways to remove herself from this lifestyle or from this treatment and pretty much what she does is she tries to disappear from the pain and she tries to remove herself from it and reading this was um reading this was very much of like how can i say this um sometimes i have to read it again just to get my, my thoughts together, but um, it reminded me of this, I always can't, I, I'm trying to work on remembering my source of information, but um, I think it was a book that I was reading and it was explaining how when traumatic events happen to people especially kids they or our body responds respond in a way of like squeezing itself in so like holding your hands to your ear and or rocking back and forth or putting you know pretty much like a fetal position or anything that makes you compress we fall into the habit of doing that for protection and for feeling some type of like separation between what's going on and ourselves. So when I was reading this quote, I was thinking of that where she's trying so hard to remove herself, not physically, but mentally and emotionally that she imagines her body slowly disappearing from this situation. And, um, was is definitely very sad to hear because nobody deserves to want to not be somewhere so badly. Um, but I chose this painting or this artwork by Teresa, Teresa Barbarza. Barbarza. Um, I chose it because it's like instead of disappearing, she's for me, it was visually trying to rip out your insides, like trying to dig yourself out so much that you just become empty, like an empty vessel, and really feeling the pain that it brings when it's like, it hurts so bad that it's like, it feels like it's an internal, internal abuse, like it feels so heavy that it hurts so much, and um, I felt like this painting goes, or this artwork goes very well with this paragraph because that's how I felt when I read it. So yeah, and then on page 65, she expresses that they were, that they themselves were black and that their own father has similarly relaxed habits was irrelevant. It was their concept of their own blackness that gave the first insult its teeth 
They seem to have taken all of their smoothly cultivated ignorance, their learned self-hatred, their designed hopelessness, and sucked it all up into a fury cone of scorn, and that had burned their ages in the hollows of their minds, cooled and spit, spilled over lips of outrage, consuming whatever was in its path. Um, automatically when I read this one, I thought of just like self-hate, truthfully feeling so much hate for who you are that is so destructive and it's so painful to even look in the mirror sometimes, but, um, yeah, and so I chose this painting by Kehan Wiley because sometimes, or in my experience, when I have so much self-hate for myself and feeling so much pain that I wasn't what everybody wanted me to be, especially as a black girl, <laughs> um, it felt like parts of me was dying and parts of me were being buried and forgotten about so I can be accepted. And when I saw this painting, I automatically, you know, felt like, felt like it represented what death is when you have to hide yourself or you have to the part the the most authentic you has to die for the moment because it will always come back but it has to die in order for you to feel or to be safe and yeah this is really sad a lot of times within this book it is sad but it's sad because it's true it's not sad because like the actual emotion I don't know if that makes sense but it's just sad because I know it to be true and it, it is still a problem within our society of a lot of self within problems and having to really shed parts of you that was never who you were in the beginning but more of a way of protecting yourself so yeah a lot of self-awareness that I needed to have was from this book especially of those childhood moments that I forgot that identified or that expressed the child that I was and you know now wanting to become closer to wanting to create a closer relationship with the child within me I have to understand why she was who she was and also knowing helps show compassion and knowing helps to understand why you are wanting forgiveness and why you are apologizing apologizing so the next quote is on page 83 and it says wherever it erupts this funk they wipe it away where it crusts they dissolve it wherever it drips flowers or clings they find it and fight it until it dies they fight this battle all the way to the grave the laugh that is a little too loud and a little too round, the gesture a little too generous, the hold their their hold their behind in for fear of a sway too free. When they sweat when they wear lipstick, they never cover the entire lip for fear of the lip is too thick. They worry and worry about the edges of their hair. Pretty much this paragraph is just just for me the description of a black woman and our beauty and how we have to or feel like we have to remove parts of ourselves in order to blend in with the crowd and so 
um, I connected this paragraph to this image, very powerful image that I actually found in, what was it? It was like black artists or a hundred black artists in the world or something like that. Recognition for black artists. And I really like this photo, not only because it's all forms of art being expressed, but also the, it's very powerful in my opinion. <laughs> Just the idea of somebody hovering over you is already, for me, an eye catcher. And um, as in a sense, it shows the visual of what she is saying, where is emphasizing a black person features and also expressing how powerful it is and how Truthfully, how alluring it can be, and also kind of scary to look at. And not scary because of standards of beauty, but scary because it's so powerful to look at. You can't help but to stare. So, to continue on, let's see. And I think this is the last one. So. She was introduced to, an, uh, to another physical beauty, probably the most destructive ideas in the history of human thought, both oriented in envy, driven by insecurity, and ended in delusional. In physical beauty with virtue, she stripped her mind, bound it, and collected self-concept by the heap. She forgot lust and simply cared for. Her. She regarded love as a possessive mating and romance as the goal of the spirit. And with this quote, I picked this painting because, which is by Wayne Jin Gim. And I picked this one because, as you can see, you know, the body is either developing or it's disappearing. And I connected the strike of light as the like the visual of or the realization of standard of beauty and kind of just like the impact it has to now what this body defines what is good and what is bad so it's kind of like you know now Parts of it is disappearing, and we don't know the creation of what's going to be brought from the disappearance, but it leaves kind of like, it leaves the awareness of having to strip yourself in order to fit in, and in order to find beauty in yourself. So, yeah. That is my final quote, and I hope you enjoy this type of form. I highly recommend if you're listening to, if you want to listen, listen, and then hopefully come back to it and look at the paintings and the artworks that I recommended, because I really do think a visual presentation does help to really understand the power of words. But like I said, I highly recommend this book. Just such a beautiful mind, truly, that Toni Morrison has is very um, alluring and is very powerful to see the beauty that words can create. But I hope you enjoyed and thank you for sitting with me again. Of course, like and subscribe and share. And thank you just for being here.